Why should we make a Buddhist shrine? Uh, I think because it's helpful to have some kind of reminders in our life of our, of our most important aspirations. And as followers of the Buddha's teaching, our, our most important aspiration is to, in a way, emulate him, to try to develop in ourselves those qualities that we talk about so often, compassion and wisdom. And so, although it's not a, utterly essential to have a shrine, it's a good skillful means because it's there every day for us to notice and to remind us of uh, it to, to, and through noticing it, to center on our, our big aspirations, on cultivating that good heartedness, of cultivating that, that, that wisdom. So what's the best form the shrine should take? Well, something that reminds us of the Buddha. And that's why throughout Buddhist history, the center point of the Buddhist shrine has been an image of the Buddha. Did he really look like the statues suggest? Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't really matter. For us, that's just a reminder. I am trying to develop those qualities, or even more strongly. Those qualities really do exist within me, but I haven't yet uncovered them properly. So the Buddha statue, the shrine itself, is like a mirror of what we're striving for, and even more importantly, a mirror of what we, we potentially are. So... We make we put a statue there or a picture of the of the Buddha. If we follow us of, of of the Mahayana, we we can also put images of the great Bodhisattvas, of uh, the male male and female Bodhisattvas, those embodiments of of, of of the qualities of the path, like Tara and Chenrezig and Manjushri and so on. And if we are followers of Vajrayana, then we have uh, uh, teachers, Vajrayana masters. We can also, if you like, put reminders of them, such as photographs on the shrine. But that's if, if, if we wish. And then we should show, in a way, some kind of respect to these images of our aspirations, the statues and so on. And that we do by making, as we call them, offerings, like sometimes with very uh, extensive offerings like the, the various bowls containing the, 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 the flowers and water and food and so on and so forth. Or maybe it's nothing more than just one flower or one bowl of water or one stick of incense. And the offering therefore is a way of, in a way, giving something of oneself, giving something beautiful, which otherwise one would think of as mine, and letting go of it being mine and offering up to the, the principle of enlightenment. Does the Buddha notice it? Of course not, that's just a statue, that's just a, a wooden I image or a metal image, but it helps us. So we're not trying to placate some god or gods and wheedle a favor out of them by making offerings, by having a shrine. It's a way of orientating and centering ourselves. We pay respect to it in the morning, before we go to bed at night, we, we notice it and pay respect to it. And that way our day is, is really one that is connected properly with the, the center of our aspirations, which is trying to develop those enlightened qualities. I noticed often over years, you know, when people start in practicing Dharma, their shrines are very simple. And that's great. Maybe they'll remain simple. But often, you know, what happens is that people give you different things for your shrine. And so your shrine becomes a little fuller, a little richer. As long as it's kind of built up in that natural way, uh, and you don't really mind whether it's elaborate or simple, then that shrine is working for you. But if you think of a shrine as like having a fancy thing and a complex thing, a status thing, you've really lost the point of it. That's, so a shrine is something to help you.